Stanley Kubrick was one of the most celebrated filmmakers of his generation, and perhaps all time. He was an auteur in every sense of the word, and was responsible for a long list of some of the greatest films ever made. Join Facts First to learn about Stanley Kubrick's life and career, the making of his final film, Eyes Wide Shut, and how his final interview before his death was a fraud. Stanley Kubrick was born July 26, 1928, in New York City. His father was a physician, and this helped the family live rather well off. Certainly, they lived more comfortably than most of his peers and neighbors. He was a shy child and rather introverted. He liked his comfort and became obsessed with being in control of his environment, something he carried with him for the rest of his life, including on set. As a teen, he developed an interest in photography and would spend most of his time snapping pictures and developing them. Eventually, he became one of the foremost photographers for Life magazine. Nevertheless, he eventually realized photography had its limits. He eventually had to graduate to movies. As he was approaching his 20s, he decided he needed to make a switch to work in cinema. He began his film career in 1951 and directed the documentary short films Flying Padre and Day of the Fight. His first major film was in 1955 when he made the thriller Killer's Kiss, for which he wrote the story. The film was a hit, and his career as a filmmaker was now solidified. Stanley Kubrick's Films Stanley Kubrick's first masterpiece was arguably the 1956 film The Killing. This was a suspense film that followed a group of criminals getting together and planning to rob from a horse racing track. The film showed his skill with cinematography and his ability to bring out some of the best performances from his actors, as this was considered to be one of Sterling Hayden's finest performances. The Killing was followed up with two back-to-back -back hits starring Kirk Douglas. Paths of Glory is now considered one of the best war films made in the U.S., and Sparta Spartacus is a great historical epic. Both of these are also lauded for their cinematography and excellent acting. In 1962, Stanley decided not only to make a great film, but make audiences uncomfortable. And this would define much of his career going forward. He made an adaptation of the novel Lolita. The film was about a university professor attracted to his young student. Needless to say, the film was and still is controversial. But Stanley Kubrick, for whatever reason, wasn't afraid of controversy. By the time he made Lolita, he realized cinema had the power to entertain, but also to engage and even disturb. Lolita was followed up by Dr. Strangelove, a fantastic dark comedy about the horrors of war and the powerful people who cause nations to turn against each other. The film is still a masterpiece today and just as poignant as ever. The fact that he made a war film that was also a comedy might seem commonplace today, but was truly one of a kind in 1964. In 1968, one year before Neil Armstrong set foot on the moon, Kubrick made 2001, a Space Odyssey. The film is considered a landmark in cinema history, and although it was made over 50 years ago, it seems as modern as ever. Or perhaps it still seems futuristic. It was one of the early films to explore our relationship with artificial intelligence and make us look deeper into human evolution. Kubrick wasn't afraid to push buttons and make his audience think while they were being entertained. This film, though haunting at times, was one that the whole family would watch together. This video is brought to you by Established Titles. Have you ever been interested in being a lord or a lady? With established titles, now you can become one. For real. You could officially change your name to lord or lady and get it on your credit card, plane tickets, etc. You can even get it on your dating profiles. You can purchase title packs that give you at least one square foot of dedicated land on a private estate in Edelston, Scotland. With the purchase, you'll receive an official certificate with a crest. Your certificate features a unique plot number with which you can see the exact location of your land. Established Titles told me that the first 200 people purchasing a title pack using my link will effectively be next to my plot within a few minutes of walking. Depending on how many of you want to become a lord or a lady, we can build our little Facts First kingdom. They plant a tree with every order and work with global charities, One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future, to support global reforestation efforts. It makes an amazing last-minute gift. Established Titles is actually running an early Black Friday sale. Plus, if you use the code FV10, you get an additional 10% off. Go to EstablishedTitles.com slash FV10 to get your gifts now and help support the channel. His next film brought discomfort to many adults and was certainly off-limits to children. A Clockwork Orange was an adaptation of Anthony Burgess's novel and is perhaps one of the few examples of a film being superior to the novel. It was a film that showed a young man addicted to, quote, ultra-violence and explored how we as a culture were growing increasingly desensitized to violence. This has become a common theme today, but once again, Kubrick was ahead of his time when he made the film. 
Barry Lyndon was a slower film that showed us 18th century Europe. Since it was a period piece, Stanley had to be heavily involved in the cinematography, acting, decoration, and lighting process. This is considered another of his masterpieces, and many critics have stated that the character of Barry Lyndon is an outsider that Stanley could relate to. Barry Lyndon was followed up with one of the greatest horror films of all time, The Shining. While Stephen King wasn't completely pleased with the adaptation of his novel, audiences and critics alike believe it's a masterpiece. It's arguably one of Jack Nicholson's best performances and one of Shelley Duvall's as well. It's a film that has been discussed for its excellence, hidden messages, as well as Kubrick's perfectionism, one making Shelley Duvall do a take a total of 127 times. This film was followed up by another war film. This time, he explored the Vietnam war in Full Metal Jacket. The film focuses first on military training before showing us the horrors of war. The acting performances are considered to be among the best in any Kubrick film, and this is often a great introduction to his work. Controversies one can't discuss Stanley Kubrick's career without discussing the many controversies surrounding his films. But perhaps of his early career, no film was met with more controversy than A Clockwork Orange. The film was meant to deter people from the sickness of violence, but supposedly it inspired many people to commit violent acts for no reason. The film was one of the early examples of a piece of art being blamed for inspiring violence. Kubrick was deeply hurt by the acts of violence inspired by the film. He requested it be banned, and even once sued a pub for showcasing the film. It wasn't until after his death that the film was re-released and released on home video. While the film is still controversial, the bigger point is that Kubrick wasn't afraid to explore the darker sides of our world through his films. Those who only look at his films as being provocative are perhaps not understanding the deeper messages. Stanley Kubrick's final interview before death was a fraud. In late 1999, six months after his death from a heart attack on March 7th, an interview of his was published. He discussed his career and his experience working on Eyes Wide Shut. Stanley was notoriously private and seldom gave interviews. When he did, he gave them only after a film was released. The interview was published on TV Times, but there's a controversy on whether he gave this interview at all. It's believed the interview was fabricated, though it still remains up in the air. What we do know is that before his death, Kubrick stated that Eyes Wide Shut was his greatest cinematic achievement, and to think he died shortly after the film was completed, but before it was released. We won't give too much away about the film, but despite the fact that it's close to three hours, the most shocking part of the film is a sequence around 15 to 20 minutes long that takes place in a mansion, which was later revealed to belong to very wealthy people. The sequence showed dark rituals that will keep you glued to your screen, although they might also disturb you. Was Stanley trying to expose something horrific about the powerful people who run our world? Perhaps they knew about this and wanted to silence him. There are many theories that surround the film and the fact that Kubrick died after completing it. Just as many people believe his final interview was a fraud but are still asking questions, we expect to keep hearing questions surrounding the deeper reasons as to why he made Eyes Wide Shut. Now it's time to hear from you. Are you a fan of Eyes Wide Shut? Did you know about the controversy about the film and the conspiracy theories surrounding Kubrick's death? Let us know in the comments section below.